Hey there friends, how's it going? David Potts with Song Notes here, and in today's video I want to return to a topic that uh, I've gotten a lot of emails about. About once every couple weeks this comes in as a question, and I have answered this in a previous video many years ago, but I want to come back to it. The topic is singing and playing at the same time, but you also could slice this up as, you know, strumming and tapping your foot at the same time, or changing chords and strumming at the same time, or any of these things we do as guitarists. There's lots of things we have to do to play a song, right? We have to strum, we have to put our hands in the different chord positions. We have to remember the order of the chords, remember how long to stay on each chord. And if we want to sing, you have to remember all the words. You have to remember when to sing them, you know, like when to switch the chords against each lyric. And then there's singing in key and in pitch, right? So all those things we have to do at the same time and ideally stay in a groove and never sort of leave the, the rhythmic pocket. So it's, it's a lot to ask for. And I get the question a lot. So Bill uh, most recently wrote this in. Uh, Bill over in the Song Notes community, thank you for your, your support, Bill. He asks about a Bob Dylan song and, and the idea of singing, changing chords, and tapping his foot for timing. But when he does those, he ends up reverting his strumming pattern back to either the boom chucka strum or just a straight up and down strumming with the beat. So what that's telling me uh, effectively is He's trying to learn this new strumming pattern, right, that I, he mentions in the top paragraph there, uh, but it's not in his comfort zone yet. So when he tries to combine that with everything else, he's reverting to a strumming pattern he already knows, okay? So uh, that's the most recent version of this question. A couple other folks who have asked this recently, Mark asked about, um, you know, when I try to sing and play at the same time, I find it very hard to stop my strumming hand from abandoning the strum pattern and following the rhythm of the words. So what that means is, you know, lots of times our strumming pattern is happening at its own tempo, right? Its own sort of groove. But the singing can happen totally outside the strumming pattern. Just like how right now I'm talking in a little bit of a different rhythm than the strum, right? Now, I'm able to do this at the same time because this is a strumming pattern that I spent forever mastering when I first sort of was running into this same exact thing. I was learning Father and Son by Cat Stevens. You know, it's down, 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 up, down. It's the strumming pattern is relatively simple to say out loud, but when you combine it with changing the chords and then singing expressively, when the singing is happening on different beats than the strum, I couldn't do it at first. It felt impossible. Uh, but I was able to get over the hump through repetition and some practice tips that I'm gonna show you here in a second. One more version of this question from Jim. Um, you know, his current challenge is actually singing the lyrics while automatically strumming and making chord changes. So that word automatically uh, resonates here. And I know Justin Sanderco talks about you wanna automate all these things. You wanna get them each to a point where you can do them without thinking about them. So I'm gonna give you all some tips in this video that will sort of help out Bill, Mark, uh, Jim, anyone else, yourself hopefully, uh, if you're ever struggling with combining things, here are some tips on how to do this, okay? Um, three things I wanna focus on. The first of them is the, the, the power of isolating things, right? Working on things individually by themselves and getting them to that point where you can do them automatically. This takes time, and I'll give you a few specific examples of this, okay? So first up, when I took piano lessons all growing up, you know, for 10 years I learned, you know, I was learning two or three songs at any one point, weekly lessons, practicing every day. But a, a thing that I learned really early on, just learning anything on piano especially, is like I would first learn the right hand and just say, say, say four measures, the first four measures of the song, right? For, the, for a week, I might work on the right hand, the first four measures, and then the first four measures of the left hand. And I wouldn't really combine them at first. You'd wanna practice them individually, right? Every song is gonna have its little uh, unique nuances. I might combine things in a different way with regard to rhythm or, or how you're playing it. But you'd play them individually to the point where you know, even if it's for a four measure section, you're pretty good at it. Like you feel like relatively uh, or, or very confident that you can play it at a slow speed without making any mistakes, you know, and, and you're doing it day after day, same with the left hand. And then eventually, after you spend time isolating them, you combine them. But here's the deal, when you combine things, and especially if it's something you're just learning, it's going to make everything generally harder. Like usually, even if I could do the right hand really well and do the left hand really well, when I combine them, I'm going very slow and I have to be very mindful that I'm not uh, just stumbling and falling on my face all the time. So it's, it's breaking it down into chunks. So isolating is important. So Bill, you asked about any exercises to separate tapping your left foot from your right hand. Now you mentioned your right hand is your strumming hand, right? So it's, it's talking about this pattern, this bass down, up, down, up, bass down, up, down, up, bass down, up, down, up, bass down, up, down, up. Now 
I'm doing this over muted strings here, right? But you'd have to do this over all the chords in this Bob Dylan song while you're tapping your foot. So here's a few ways you could isolate things, right? First up, don't worry about chord changes yet. Just like I said, mute the strings with your left hand and go over the strumming pattern, right? So a bass down, up down, a bass down. And then you could bring in your tapping foot with that. And don't even put the song on yet, maybe. Well, I, I messed up there because I'm talking while I'm doing these things, right? But uh, isolate, remove elements from the equation is overall uh, what I'm getting to here, okay? So um, isolating is very powerful. Maybe work on don't singing yet. Don't worry about the chord changes. Or uh, you could also work about work on just doing your foot tapping, okay? I don't know if you're tapping on the one count or if you're tapping on the one and the three or you're tapping on the two and the four. It's gonna depend on the song and the context and everything. Um, but you could, for example, do the foot tap you want with uh, simple chord changes. And that's gonna be my sort of second point here is the idea of simplification. So instead of doing this bass down, up, down, up, bass down, up, down, up, bass down, right? Maybe you could just do something simple where it's a strum just on the one count. And you're singing and you're doing the chord changes and the foot tapping, but all you're strumming is, you know, one, two, three, four. I'm tapping my foot right now. You can't really see it. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going through the theoretical chord progression here. And maybe I could even sing, right? But what I'm doing is simplifying what my strum is doing, okay? And that's a good way to get everything else that you're not simplifying, get it up to speed and comfortable with each other. And then what that's gonna do is your brain's gonna be like, hey, we have this under control. We have some extra bandwidth here. Uh, let's work on spicing up that strumming pattern and getting it to that full version, right? So maybe you go from just the one count strums to bass down to four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Ain't no use to see that I wonder why, baby. Right? So this is an example of simplifying. Now, you're gonna have to use your own judgment when it comes to making sure it still feels like the song you're trying to play. Sometimes you can simplify things too much and it almost feels totally distant and abstract versus what you're trying to get to. But again, take elements out of the equation if you need to. That's a general tip to make sure your plate is never too full, okay? Um, another general tip here is slowing it down. Don't feel like you have to uh, hit the ground running at full speed when it comes to playing something, right? If, if a song is played at you know 100 beats per minute, uh, generally slow it down like make sure you have mastery over each component individually and when you start to combine them take it really slow okay you don't want to take it so slow that again you lose that sense of recognition and everything but take it slow if you're still messing up again go back to the other steps take things out of the equation don't worry about your tap foot tapping yet or maybe don't worry about the chord changes yet right so uh, speed is very important here there's a very um i think a, a weird tendency we can have to when we mess up just to stubbornly plow ahead and play things uh, faster. It, it, it's a really weird thing. It's almost like we know that the finish line is ahead and if we move faster, we're gonna get there quicker. But with practicing uh, music, I know that for sure, um, that's not always gonna be an, a, 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 what's the word, an equation for success. Okay, so slow it down until you can do something without making any mistakes at a very slow speed. And sometimes this feels like just, you know, assaultingly um, insulting to us because it's like, come on, I can do this slow, but can you like take it down really slow, you know, combine, uh, combine things together. And if you're still messing up, slow it down further. And if you're still messing up, you probably are, are too much on your plate. So take some things off or simplify them, some things, get it to a point where it's good. And, uh, and then proceed, okay? Now, a few other important tips here. Um, one is this role of repetition and consistency. Uh, when you're learning anything, anything new, if you can't do it the first time, uh, don't think that you're, you're just totally unable to do it. Know that it's gonna take some time and some reps. You're gonna have to go through this kind of thing, uh, whatever you're learning, whether it's a few times a day or a few days in a row, or, or maybe it's most days for a week, right? It's gonna take time to go through the reps, practice, use these tips I already showed you, Ex explore things you know, in a sound, with a sound approach, but come back to it day after day. And you're gonna find when you do this, things get a little bit easier uh, over time. Like it's almost like your body or your brain or your mind or whatever, or your muscle, muscle memory um, is realizing, okay, this thing keeps coming up. This is something that I have to sort of pay attention to. And I, for me, I love this. Even still, when I learn stuff, that first hour or two can be frustrating because I just can't get into the groove. But usually after that first hour, and it's usually the next day, 
or the next the day after that, it's almost like my mind has been working on things in between practice sessions, right? Or, or it's, some, it's so much easier to pick up the next day in a very weird sense. So just know that multiple practice sessions will do you favors. I know that the, the pace of how fast you learn stuff is gonna be variable for each of us, depending on what we're learning, how far outside of our comfort zone is it, and all that sort of thing. Um, another really important thing here is uh, using tools. And when I say tools, like, I mean like a metronome or just put on the song. It's a, a sort of a, a wonder we have of this current digital world is our ability to pull up a recording of Bob Dylan singing this song or, or me doing the cover of it, right? And especially with YouTube, you can go into the settings and slow down a video. Now, here are some valuable tips. You can put on a song, let it play, and then while it's doing, uh, while it's playing, you could focus on just one of those those uh, skills. So for example, say you wanna do the, the strumming, right? Bass down, up, down, up, bass down, up, down, up, bass down, up, down, up, bass down. You could put on Bob Dylan's version of the song, the recorded version, get it to a tempo you like, and while it's playing, you play along with it doing the strum. And you're doing a muted strum like this, and you're doing it over him. But this is gonna teach you uh, rhythm. It's going to teach you this strumming pattern. It's really going to get it in your, you know, muscle memory, sort of get, get you through those reps. But the important part is your brain, your ears and everything are going to be hearing this song and you're going to, I, I feel like under the hood, I might be sort of making this up or, or, or fictionalizing here, but this idea of like, you're hearing the song, you're playing along with it, right? You're doing the strumming pattern and it's almost like it's going to make your, whether your brain, your muscles, however this is working, uh, you're going through this, the motion with the strumming pattern, but you have that context of the song in the background. So it's almost like part of your mind is, okay, that would be the C. Okay, that's the G. Okay, that's the A minor. Okay, this is that walk down part. Even though you're not playing those, you're hearing those and you're going through the strumming motion, right? And it's going to just, again, sort of like putting fertilizer on a field or whatever, getting it ready for those crops to grow when you eventually combine things and apply repetition to that. Maybe do that once or twice a day. Um, that's a, a really important lesson here. One thing I'll say with singing too, I use this with, with learning new songs that I don't have thoroughly memorized, right? I will type up the lyrics, print them out or follow on the screen. That doesn't really matter. But I'll listen to the song from beginning to end. I'll try to do it at least once or twice a day. And I'll, I'll make sure I'm focused. I'm not distracted by anything else. And while the song is going, I might not be singing yet, but I'm following the song. I'm listening to it and I'm, I'm looking at the lyrics as they, are, as they are passing. And to me, this is just like an Im immensely effective way of sort of letting those lyrics get like grooved into my brain, right? And I don't know if I'm a visual learner and just having things typed out really helps me, right? But I, I find that if I do that a couple times a day, a few days in a row, it is just way easier than when I start to bring in the guitar playing, right? And start to bring in trying to sing it and sing it and pitch and everything. Um, so that's just a, a general tool we have is whether it's a metronome or something like a recorded version um, playing along. But in general, so Bill, going back to your original question, um, I would recommend, you know, doing that strumming just by itself, no chords yet over Bob Dylan's version, right? Same thing with tapping your foot. You could do this when you're driving in theory, uh, you know, brake pedals aside and all that sort of thing. But put the song on, whether you want to tap your foot in the two and the four or the one and the three, whatever it is, work on just doing the foot tapping while you're listening to the song, right? Listen to the song once or twice a day for a few days in a row with that foot tapping and, and being mindful about, you know, being on the beat, right? Um, that's going to be super helpful in getting that foot used to playing along with that song and then combine the two, but maybe combine the two in a simpler way where you're doing, you know, just the strumming, then bring in the foot tapping, right? Tap, tap, right? Tap, tap. Um, and then you could do the, you know, do it without singing, right? Or, or maybe simplify your strumming pattern. So I'll leave it up to you as far as how you put all these together. But my overall point is uh, don't feel like, even if I give you the full recipe of here's the strumming pattern you wanna use, here's all the chord changes, Here's, you're gonna tap your foot on, on these counts and everything, and you know the pitches you're supposed to sing at, don't feel like you're supposed to put all those together and just immediately be at full speed, right? Take it slow, uh, like I said, simplify things if you need to, let everything else get sort of build up with the muscle memory, and then if you still need that practice, isolate. Practice those things individually, okay? Because you really wanna get each thing to a point where it's automated and you're not even thinking about it. And that takes time. And there's always gonna be the weakest link. That's an important thing I've noticed is when you're learning a song or, or uh, you're singing or you know, you're doing a lead riff, 
there's usually a part where I know this is where I usually fall down. And that's a key to practice that. that that's a, that's a, a key of insight is like, that's the part you should be practicing, whether it's slowing it down or isolating just that lead guitar lick, doing it you know, a few times a day, uh, that repetition part I brought in, slowing it down, making it, it, it simple, right? Um, breaking things into pieces and then just sort of having the, the faith in the process, I think is really important well, as well, because with time, you will get better at these things as long as you're practicing smartly. So uh, Bill and also for Jim and also for Mark, I hope you found this helpful, everybody. Um, learning music is, uh, is the rewards are, are great. Uh, sometimes the journey though can be tricky. And I'm hopefully feeling that these tips helped you out there as well. But anyone else, if you have any uh, questions about this, let me know. Uh, the best way to do this is over on my website, songnotes.net. I have a members only community over there, a super positive place where you can sort of ask questions, get feedback, share great music. And um, all of you are uh, helping me uh, make these lessons full time, which is my dream. So thank you all very much for the support. Bill, again, I hope this is helpful. And uh, any other questions any of you have, let me know. The more specific you can be, the better, because that helps me sort of give you a more tailored answer. All right, so I'll see you in the next video, my friends. And uh, until then, take care. Bye-bye.